The Liber Inae Gemis, also known as the Book of Laws, or, the Book of the Cows, is an ancient 12th century grim war that prescribes recipes and magic formulas for a varied range of supernatural processes and paranormal phenomena, including the key to becoming invisible. The Liber Inae Gemis that we currently know emerges from a dubious translation of a medieval book known as Kitab and Nawamis, which in turn is linked to an apocryphal work of Plato probably a resource to give some authority to the work. Beyond its origin and authorship, by the way, uncertain, it is a truly amazing occult book, especially for its references to rites and magical practices to become invisible, which present a series of difficult obstacles to avoid. There we can find the formula to control different natural phenomena such as storms and lightning, the creation of homunculi, the manufacture of tulpas, ways of thinking, to acquire the gift of clairvoyance, divination, the possibility of executing different metamorphoses, such as transform into a werewolf, and finally the secret of invisibility. Most of the magical recipes of Liber and Agemis require unusual ingredients, and whose obtaining places the necromancer at the border of the criminal. In addition to impossible substances and unknown minerals, the book uses virtually all organic fluids, tears, blood, sweat, bile, sperm, as well as eschatological residues that the magician must collect in the precise lunar phases. The Liber Maior justifies his nickname, the Book of the Cow, through dark rites that remind us of Paracelsus and his manual to create homunculi. The manufacture of these humanoids, similar to the Hebrew myth of the Golem, uses the uterus of a live cow as an environment where the homunculus will be developed. Perhaps that is why Liber Gemis was also known as De Proprietibus Membrorum Animali Um, that is, on the properties of animal members. Let's return to a much less rugged subject. Fortunately, to learn to become invisible it was not necessary to resort to these filters. According to Liber and Agemis, invisibility is not a gift that one can acquire without assuming others, that is to say, it is not a power that comes alone, but it is one more facet of the magical process, a side effect, if you like. To become invisible through magic is to transgress the limits of nature. When the magician obtains invisibility, we insist, only before the human eye, the nature that surrounds him does everything possible to denounce it, the treetops bend in front of him, the birds fly in frantic flocks around him, the animals' domestics go wild, the flowers wilt, the horses are rearing up for no apparent reason, the temperature drops inexplicably. Even ordinary people who cannot see someone who has become invisible can deduce their presence. The feeling of being observed is transformed into a fixed idea, an obsession. At night, that symptom of oppression to feel presences when you are alone translates into horrible nightmares that make us wake up. The Liber and Agemis states that women are much more skilled at detecting invisible people, and have prophylactic methods as efficient as unconscious articulation. When female intuition alerts them to the presence of something strange and invisible in the vicinity, women begin to sing and hum. According to the book, this has a devastating effect on the invisible person since their hearing is overextended. While it is true that Liber and Agemis is mainly a collection of formulas and magic recipes, due to its thick theoretical considerations, we can also frame it within the most important esoteric books of the period, that is, from those works that expect a certain degree of philosophical complicity from the reader. This means that Liber and Agemis is based on the tradition of correspondences, that is, it is possible to obtain the characteristics of certain plants, animals and minerals. In this sense, the book proposes us to create the Stone of Invisibility. After that time, the magician harvested the stone, formed with it an amulet to wear around the neck, and prepared to practice all kinds of misdeeds covered by invisibility. It is worth noting, as Pliny does in his Natural History, that the Stone of Invisibility only serves to hide from natural light, being the subject perfectly visible in the light of fire. 